Hey, good morning. Hopefully you guys had a great weekend. Um, we have a lot to get through today. And I, I know I always say that, but we have a lot to get through. And I'm really trying to be mindful of my time, Mackenzie. Uh, I have my timer going. I'm going to start that. And I've got 20 minutes today. And so I want to make sure I've got my notes here. So you're going to see me looking down considering my notes because I want to make sure I stay on topic and I don't go off topic and talk about a lot of things. Two things I want to talk about first, those are your um, labs that you're working on at home. I just want to check on those and see how they're doing for you. Um, let's talk about our seeds first. So my seeds, I've got kind of mixed results with my seeds so far. So right now, this is one of my lima beans. And let's see if it'll zoom in. You can see, there it is, right there. I have one lima bean that's doing really, really well, and it has this little sprout. When it starts to sprout, that's called germination, and that's what we're looking for. So I have one lima bean that's doing really, really well. The paper towel, maybe you guys saw this too, the paper towel for this lima bean was, it wasn't getting dry, but it was starting to get like pink spots on it, and I didn't know if that was like a mold or a fungus or something. So I took that paper towel out, put a fresh paper towel in, put this guy back in, and I'm gonna leave him back on my window and we'll see how that goes. Um, the other thing was my mint, and the mint's not doing anything. So I'm probably gonna end up just ditching that. I'm gonna leave it a couple more days and see if maybe something happens. Um, I need to look up mint, the germination process for mint too, and see how many days that takes to germinate, because maybe it just takes a little bit longer. But look at this. This is my sage, and you can see, I'll just put it right next to my, yeah. It is really germinating, all of those. This is the actual seed part, the black part. I was holding it by the, you can't see it very well when I do it that way. So I'm holding it by the, by the sprout. So these would be perfect if I wanted to harvest sage, I could go ahead and plant those and then that would take off and I would have a sage plant. So pretty cool. Uh, keep working on those. Let me know how they are working for you. Once yours have sprouted, uh, you can go ahead and throw them away once you've got, you see the germination. I want you to just see what I'm talking about because I will be, we're going to be talking about where do plants producers get their energy from. And so it's important for me that you have that background information that you're able to like real life experience that you're able to see it so that when we talk about it, you're able to connect with it a little bit better. Once they're done, you can either plant them and, and take advantage of that, or you can just throw them away. Um, second thing I want to talk to you about is just to remind you to take your pictures of your trees. Hopefully you guys are going out every single day, about the same time every single day, so the sun's in the same spot, and um, you're taking good pictures of those leaves. Some of you guys were taking pictures of your tree kind of far away, and I think over time that will be cool, but like you're missing the, the subtle changes that are happening. So if you can, go and take closer pictures of the trees. Um, Okay, that's it for housekeeping. Just let me know if you have any questions about that. Today, we're gonna to talk about vermicomposting. And this is probably one of the favorite things that I've ever done, just because I've never done anything like this before. Um, let me share my screen with you. Vermicomposting just means that we are composting using worms. And I'm not, squeamish around worms. Snakes, you guys know, is a different story for me, but worms don't bother me at all. And so this is just kind of fascinating. A couple of things really quick, just some background information. We are studying, um, we're looking at our strand of standard that is matter and energy in organisms and in ecosystems. And specifically, we are looking at um, standard 784, where we gather, analyze, and communicate evidence of of the flow of energy and the cycling of matter in organisms and in ecosystems. And so what better way to show you how organisms cycle energy through their ecosystem from one organism to the other than by showing you Decompo decomposers. Worms are decomposers. I'm sure that you guys have heard that word before. Consumers, producers, decomposers. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow. Um, but I wanted to show you kind of a model 
of how one organism will break down food and use that energy. And just so it's a good model, we can talk about it. You guys can kind of make some connections. Um, worm composting bins, the worms will actually break down any food that you give them in addition to the bedding that they have in order to get their energy that they need to live. And they make what is called worm castings. And worm castings are just the poop. They're worm poop. And if you've ever gone fishing and you've gotten live bait and you've got worms and you, you have that like black round, it looks like dirt, but not quite dirt, that's worm castings. Uh, you guys, this is highly sought after material. Gardeners um, use worm castings. It's actually labeled, it's called black gold because this is rich in nutrients, especially nitrogen that plants need in order to continue to grow. Um, normally plants get this from the soil and the soil has, you know, the, the organisms that have broken down. It's got, you know, all the um, um, different chemicals and stuff that it needs. But this worm casting, the um, poop, is just like manure that people use. Um, it doesn't have, you don't use, um, chemicals, it's organic, it's really, really good. So um, ultimately, I will be getting some worm castings and maybe grow some plants in the classroom. So interesting. All right, this whole thing is called verma composting. Uh, <coughs> hang on. <coughs> Let me go back. Sorry, you guys. Um, some of you have told me that you compost and but you don't use worms. So vermicomposting is specifically using worms for composting. I'm going to stop sharing this screen, okay? And then I have to share another screen with you. And so I'm gonna share my desktop with you. Okay, I think I just did, beautiful. And I know it's a mess, nobody say anything. Okay, so I decided to videotape myself putting this worm composting bin together. Um, and I did not record myself because I don't have a microphone and, and the audio didn't pick up very well. So um, let me just kind of explain what I'm doing here as you're watching. So I've got um, my materials. I've got a 18 gallon tote and I used a half inch drill to drill air holes around it. Hang on, I don't know why my sound is sharing on this one. That's odd. I'm gonna leave it if it's annoying or if my dogs are barking, I can't remember. Um, okay, so I've got bedding material is I've got peat moss and I've got um, shredded newspaper. And the worms actually eat the bedding as well as the food that you give them. I drilled holes all around the top of the bin, but I did not drill any holes in the bottom for drainage holes. I've done a lot of research and some people said you need drainage holes, some people said you don't need drainage holes. And um, I decided not to because I just didn't want to run the risk of the worms crawling out of the drainage holes. And um, so I just, I left it. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you about the moisture control of and why that's important later. So right now you can see that I'm dumping in some of that peat moss and I've got some information. The peat moss is actually pretty, really great material. It's organic. It's made from moss and, and the moss that grows naturally, uh, it just dies. And so there's dead moss um, and other organic material. And the interesting thing is that Peat moss is a non-renewable resource, which is interesting to me because I thought, oh, it's, you know, it grows, it's organic, it's renewable, and I did a little bit of research, it's not. Um, I'll talk to you more about that in a second. I'm adding shredded newspaper, and you can use shredded um, cardboard or computer paper, but again, basically the reason why you put newspaper in there is just to help control the moisture. It'll soak up some of the water. And I wanted to show you kind of how hard it was for me to mix the two together. The um, newspaper tends to clump up. 
and that peat moss is like really dry. Peat moss absorbs 10 to 20 percent of its weight in water. And so I wanted to go ahead and add a little bit of water because then I thought, okay, maybe that'll give something to bind to, and it did. So I just have to work with it a little bit to do a little bit of the um, mixing. Peat moss, um, it takes thousands of years for that moss to die and decompose and create peat moss. And so the reason why it's non-renewable is because it takes so long to make. Um, I'm just adding a little bit more water just to get it to stick a little bit more. It's beneficial because it does hold water, so it's not going to leach out, it won't dry out. And it also holds the nutrients. Um, so gardeners use peat moss a lot because it's, it's not going to allow the nutrients for the plants to just sort of drain away in the soil. It, it, it holds it in there. Um, but they only harvest two hundredths of a percent, so 0.02 percent that is available. They only harvest that much because um, it just takes so long for it to, to, to create peat moss. Uh, there's another material that I could have used. I, I did a little bit of research afterwards, and I found coconut core. Um, and it's just made with coconut fiber and it doesn't hold as much water as the peat moss does. Uh, I think it's only eight to 10% or eight to 10 times its weight, but it is renewable. And so if I were to do this again, I would choose the coconut core. Uh, I'm adding a little bit more peat moss because I'm supposed to have two to three inches at the bottom of that bin. And I'm just making sure that it's wet enough. Um, the texture is supposed to be the consistency or the texture of a wrung out sponge. So not very wet at all. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my food to the bin. And worms can eat anything as long as it's organic. In other words, you cannot have any kind of um, fertilizer or anything that is not organic, not fresh food. So apples or like vegetables, fruits, I've got lettuce, I've got um, pineapple core in there. Um, you just have to make sure you cut it up. I'm going to pause just for a second because I want to talk about the food. Oh, that's a great picture. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the food just a little bit more. Um, I put lettuce, we had some strawberries, and so I cut up the, the green parts, the stems of the strawberries. Um, you can use anything that's fresh like that, but you can't, like a potato, or if you put a whole potato in there, they're gonna have a really hard time breaking that down. So whatever you do, you're supposed to cut it up and introduce it into the bin so that it's already cut up pretty small, so the worms don't have to spend a whole lot of energy breaking that down, because they just, they won't do it. They'll move on to something else. Um, so everything that I have is really cut up couple of things that you cannot feed worms. You cannot feed them any dairy, no animal products, so no meat, no eggs. Um, I don't know about eggshells. I suppose I could research that and see. I'm not sure about that because I know that's something that you can compost, um, but I don't know if you can vermicompost that. And uh, no nuts, no oils, because it they'll get um, rancid before the worms can eat them, and then your whole bin is going to be not good. Uh, it's not a good environment, not a healthy environment for the worms. Okay, so um, now we're going to get the worms, and in this bag, it's like a breathable bag. It's completely full. I think it was like um, one pound of worms. I had over 2,000 red wiggler worms. And you don't want to use earthworms for this. They don't work very well. I just think the worms are fascinating. They, they came in a big ball and I just picked up a little bit just because I wanted to show you. And they said don't break them apart. Let them stay together. But unfortunately you can see that uh, some of them fell on my counter pick those up. And what I did is I put the food, worms, and then I'm piling the bedding on top of it. I'm still leaving some of the bedding over here, 
but I'm piling a lot of that bedding up on top of those worms because I want them just to stay there for the food and the worms do not like light at all. And so I've covered them up with the bedding and the newspaper. Um, in addition to the food, the worms are gonna eat the peat moss and they're going to eat the newspaper. And all of that then is gonna be what is generated um, when they have the worm castings. So I thought I had newspaper, I don't. I, I was reading, like how do you keep them from crawling out of those little holes? And the worms, like I said, they like a dark environment. And um, so I'm gonna put the lid on top of it, but then also they like it moist, but again, not wet. So I read that you take newspaper sheets, not the, the shredded newspaper, and then um, put some water on top of that or like let them be a little bit wet. And then it just sort of provides a barrier for the worms. And so they're gonna wanna stay there. Had I done this before, I learned a lesson. I probably should have taken those newspaper and, and put them in the water and then wrung them out and then laid them on top. It worked okay the way that I did it. It just kind of, um, I thought the newspaper would absorb the water a little faster than it did. And you're gonna see here in a second, I pull it up and kind of rearrange it because it was not, uh, I was panicking there for a second. I thought I got it too wet, but I didn't. It ended up soaking it up and it was fine. Um, so I just laid it flat like that. And then um, I'm just gonna put the lid on top of it. And then I am done. There's no holes or anything in the lid, uh, the air holes. Yay, that's it. Okay, um, so let me get out of here. I'm gonna stop sharing. I always stop my videos at just like the weirdest places. All right, now I need to share a screen with you. But first I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so I've got one more thing I wanna share with you. And let's go back here. All right, so these are pictures that I took just today. Um, so I did, I set up the bin about seven days ago. And then I haven't, I've gone in a couple times to check them to make sure the moisture is good, but I have not checked on the worms themselves. I haven't pulled the paper back. I haven't done anything. I really want to make sure that I just gave them time to kind of become acclimated to the bin and um, not freak them out or anything. So they need to be, in order to, to be successful, these worms need an environment that is between 40 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you can put these outside, but in the summertime, especially in a black tote, they're going to get way too hot and they're not going to do very well. So because I know I want to bring them back to the classroom in the fall and I know I'm going to keep them inside, um, I thought I'm just going to keep them inside here. We have a bathroom that my uh, daughter used to use when she lived with us and um, nobody uses that bathroom really anymore. So I have it in the bathtub and uh, it's dark and it's cool in there and, and temperature is just right. If you are interested in indoor vermicomposting or the reason why I know I'm gonna be successful with this is because you can do this and you won't even know, like I can't tell that there is a smell at all, my husband does. Um, and it just smells earthy. It just smells like earth. Like it's not a bad, the, the food's not rotting or anything. It's not a bad smell at all. But you, the trick is that you have to control the moisture in your bin. And so just as long as I make sure that I've got newspaper and, you know, if I give them food that's a little bit wet and it takes a little bit of time for them to, um, to break that down, I can control the moisture with, by adding more strips of newspaper, a little bit more peat moss to it. Okay, all right, so I peeled away that newspaper layer, and you can see that we've got the shredded newspaper and um, peat moss. And the next picture I'm gonna show you, I'm just giving you a warning. Some of you guys are squeamish around worms. It's not bad at all, but I'm just warning you that the next picture shows the worms, okay? Here we go. Not bad at all, see, I told you. I didn't wanna really dig them up because I didn't wanna disturb them at all. But you can see we've got a couple worms right here at the surface. This is, I just kind of started to, started to pull it up. Um, you can see my lettuce, strawberries, there's uh, I think either pineapple or an apple um, core 
And I wish you could have seen, I think next time I show you guys these worms, I'm gonna take a videotape or record it them because this whole area all around here is just a huge ball of worms and you can see the dirt the peat moss you can see it moving because they're just they're in there doing their job they're breaking down that food they're doing a great great job um so they're doing well i was excited i hadn't seen them for a week and i wanted to make sure that they didn't die and they didn't they're doing awesome um, I wanted to show this picture too because this is what I have to be careful of. The worms that are not right there by the food, they're looking for the food. They're looking for food, they're looking for water, they're kind of searching and so they'll crawl up the sides and I've lost maybe 10 that have come out the hole and like I said, worms breathe through their skin and so um, if they don't have moisture, then they'll shrivel up and die. And so unfortunately, those that are in my bathtub kind of just dried out. Um, and then these guys crawled up and they were at the top. And so um, I have to just very carefully remove them from the lid and put them back in. Since I had that food just kind of sitting out, it was perfect. I just laid them right on top and then they'll be great. Um, but I think there are about 10 of them on the lid. And then this poor guy right here, he was, he didn't, he didn't make it. So, so far, I think I've lost maybe 11 out of 2,000. So approximately. So I think that's pretty good. Hey, here's what I want you guys to do. Uh, I know you have questions. I know you have comments. I know you have thoughts about vermicomposting or composting in general. Um, go ahead and leave a comment. I'm grading this because I want to make sure that you watch the video. So I'm just leaving it open. You can't make a comment unless you watch the video. And then I want you guys to feel free to talk to each other, respond to each other. So uh, some of you guys already do some composting and um, you can answer questions maybe better than me. Or if you have a specific question, like how much food do I feed them? How often do, do I feed them? How long does it take for the um, black gold to be harvestable? Um, how much am I gonna get? How often do the worms reproduce? Tons of questions I'm sure you guys could ask. Ask me the questions, I will get back to you. Um, I'm at 22 minutes right now, so I need to get going. Tomorrow, I'll have a shorter assignment for you since this one was a little bit more than 20 minutes, okay? Have a great day, you guys. I'll talk to you later. I'm going to stop sharing and end my meeting. Okay, bye.